welcome to Calvin Logic, where we take my thoughts and use my crazy logic to talk about anything and everything. Today, my friends, we're going to be talking about politics while taking the political compass. So, why am I doing politics? Well, I've already done at least one on my channel, but I am quite into politics. I like to talk politics. I like to watch and analyze politics. I am by no means a political expert, a political scientist, whatever. I just like to look at everything and give my opinions, same as movies and games and stuff like that. One of the reasons I created this channel is to do the movies and the TV shows and the games and stuff like that, but also uh, a key factor in the channel is going to be politics. Now, I have started off very slowly on this because I know that uh, politics is more of a niche group, more of a something that not everybody likes. I want to do it a little bit kind of different, kind of the same. A lot of the politics I talk about on this channel will be American politics, but also because I'm a New Zealander, I want to talk about New Zealand politics. And I feel like unless they're a channel who is specifically made to do politics around the world, people either kind of focus on America or Western politics or, uh, you know, army politics around the world. Whereas I want to kind of go a bit deeper into that. I want to do American politics just because, especially at the time of recording this video, it's very interesting with Trump being president. But I also want to do other places like New Zealand politics because I'm a New Zealander, so of course I have a little bit of a, a little bit of a heads up, a little bit more information that is easier to access because I'm a New Zealander. I can kind of gauge what's going on and see different things easier than some. But also ones like Australian politics, because Australia is New Zealand's neighbour, so again, it's quite easy, but it's quite interesting. Um, but I want to go all around the world. I want to do British, I want to do Russian, I want to do German and Brazilian, and heck, we might even go and have a look at uh, Venezuela or China or something like that. Um, but yeah, my main thing isn't probably going to be politics. I am not going to be barraging you with every political news story from everywhere, every day. Uh, I do want to keep it more to stories that I find more interesting or just bigger stories. And I know that those bigger stories are covered by a lot more. but. The bigger ones are generally what I tend to find interesting, and my take will be different to everybody else's. But that said, there will be some smaller ones, there will be some more regional ones that maybe people don't know about, and different things. Um, I want to go into the history of different countries' politics as well. It won't just be current politics. If there's a story from, say, Mexican politics that was 50 years ago but is really interesting, um, and maybe even relevant, then I'll talk about it. I'll give my opinions on it. I'll things like that, as you know, and and as I said in my welcome to the channel video, I also want to do alternate histories and stuff like that. So these two will go kind of hand in hand. But yeah. So anyway, for those who are wondering, that's why I'm going to be doing politics. If you're not that interested in politics, that's cool. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the content I'm going to be making. That said, let's get into it. So for those who don't know, the political compass test is just one of a few, and I might do some of the other tests uh, down the line, but this test is to see where you fall on the political compass. Are you a left, per, a leftist? Are you a rightist? Are you a liberal? Or are you authoritarian? And that's kind of the broad, uh, the the broad scale of things. I've watched a lot of other political YouTubers do this test just to see where they fall and what they think. Not that it's going to impact my answers but just to see what they had to say about the test because I had heard that this test is a little bit lenient 
to different aspects and it is unfortunately so don't take exactly where I fall on this test as you know my my dead fast political stance because there are things where I might be more to take American politics I might be more Republican on most things but every now and then I'll change over to the Democrat side on stuff like that or for New Zealanders and it might be you know I'll be mostly New Ze uh, national but every now and then there might be something that I'm Labour uh, so stuff like that um, or vice versa depending on the country and the politics and it, it all depends on the politics and how those politics are pushed out for me and I know a lot of people are still dead fast and I'm a Democrat or I'm a laboring a labor person or I'm a conservative or this or that which is fine I'm in no way going to judge I'm no way here to uh, belittle your opinion uh, this is purely my opinions so anyway with all that said let's get into it quick note I got my dad to do the political test as well um, and so at the end after my results are in I will flash up his and we can talk about that uh, this top part just talks about what the political compass is stuff like that we've got people like uh, Stalin, Mao Zedong Margaret Thatcher people like that so this test is six pages long uh, actually the pages do get shorter as it goes on as well um, but I will only be doing five of the six the last page is about sexuality and stuff like that um, and there will be times on this channel where it is a little less family friendly just because of the way politics and different movies and stuff like that that I might want to cover are or even games uh, I don't want to put I've seen those questions and stuff and while some of them are okay uh, quite a lot of them are interesting to say the least so if you want to see those or do this test yourself I'll leave a link in the description um, I have already contacted a lot of my friends and said hey guys I'm gonna do a video on this and I'd love to see where you guys land so uh, it'll be interesting to see where they land and if what we thought you know where they would land is where they'd land so I might do a follow-up video on that if they're cool with it um, but anyway first we got to do it ourselves so this first page is all about just how you see the world and your country with inside the world keep in mind that this uh, that this compass this test was made by American slash British so it does it's more American uh, with a little bit of British tweaked in there so so if economic globalization is inevitable it should primarily serve humanity rather than the interest of transnational corporations well for a start off it's not inevitable we've seen this with the current plague um, and I actually think that this plague will kind of reset some things and countries will go ah oh, we can't have such a reliance on the global system we do have to kind of take care of ourselves a little bit better than before so I mean here's the thing with this this is the thing like I don't agree that globaliza uh, globalization is inevitable but I do agree that if it were to hypothetically it should serve us humans rather than corporations I mean that's just a given so the first question kind of lets you know kind of what type of test this is going to be but anyway so I agree with that I'd always support my country whether it was right or wrong uh, if I was in the Soviet Union and I'll take the Soviet Union because it's not uh, just outing one country it's a whole big place um, but anyway if I was in the Soviet Union then I wouldn't support the Soviet Union when it killed my 
nation mates, you know, even if I didn't know them. That was wrong, and I wouldn't support it for... I might say I'd support it so that Stalin didn't come and kill me, but, you know, being patriotic is definitely a a good thing. I think everybody should be a little bit patriotic, but being super patriotic is also bad. You need to find that balance. So no one chooses his or her country of birth, so it's foolish to be proud of it. No. I, uh, I disagree with that because, for example, if I was born in Australia, but then within a period, let's say I only lived there for a couple of years, well, I would have no memories of that. And let's say I moved to New Zealand, then for me, New Zealand would be my country. And I probably would be proud of New Zealand. I mean, I am proud of New Zealand for the most part. Um, so I disagree with that. Our race has many superior qualities compared to other races. No, no it doesn't. That is definitely a no. I'm going to do a whole topic on race because I have some very interesting opinions on that. So anyway, look out for that. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. See, when Dad and I were taking this uh, for him, we said that, you know, it, it's it's good that the options are strongly disagree, disagree, agree, and strongly agree. But honestly, it should have like a, a middle or a neutral or, you know, it should have been like one to five or one to ten or something like that. To um, Because for this one, it would more be like, I lean towards disagree, uh, but because most of the time the enemy of my enemy is still going to be a separate enemy, but every now and then the enemy of my enemy can help me take out the first enemy. So I'm going to say disagree because that can lead to a lot of travesty and I don't think that in a political sense that is good politicking. Military action. that defies international law is sometimes justified. Sometimes. And I'm glad they use sometimes, because sometimes it is justified. And considering the international community, let's take the UN, but even things like NATO, uh, they're just crazy. Or even the EU. I know NATO and the EU are very similar in the areas that they inhabit and what they kind of things but they are different um but yeah it's international law especially from the un standpoint is ridiculous and i reckon that organization needs to be shut down and essentially rebooted with something a lot better that's a lot more fairer to all countries but also actually does stuff there is now a worrying fusion of information and entertainment i agree so this page talks about the economy. So, people are ultimately divided more by class than by nationality. How that is an economy question, I don't know. But um, I would agree that people are starting to become more divided by class around the world in general. I think in some places it still is divided either equally or a little bit more by nationality, which is stupid, but um, those lines are being blurred very strongly at the moment. Controlling inflation is more important than controlling unemployment. Well, again, this is a little bit of a silly question because if you control inflation, then you are going to at least control an aspect of unemployment. Is it more important than controlling unemployment? Again, this is where it would be like a neutral because I think you should try and control, or control to an extent, uh, both. Whether you can effectively or not is a different question. Um, so I'm gonna disagree, but it, it's like I could do both. Because corporations cannot be trusted to voluntarily protect the environment, they require regulations. I do agree that some regulations are needed, but most companies, most, 
not all, but most, uh, especially the ones who work on having a sustainable uh, supply line of different things. They, it's in their interest to help and protect the environment. I agree that some regulations are needed, but are they better? Not necessarily. And not all countries, uh, sorry, not all corporations need them. From each according to his ability to each according to his need is a fundamentally good idea. If you want to be a communist, this is a quote from uh, the Soviet era used by a lot of Soviet people, more in the Soviet Union than in uh, other places, but it has been thrown around places like Vietnam. Fundamentally, yeah, it can have its perks, but you shouldn't, you, you shouldn't be judged on what you need by, so in other words, what you can get by your ability. Um, and what is that saying for, uh, you know, a lot of people with mental disabilities. Now, I hate saying that because these people, no matter what they have, bring a lot to the table. They have their own special way of contributing to society and quite often they are smarter or can do things that a lot of people can't and would never even attempt to do because they'd find it too hard. So... If I'm ever talking about that, you'll probably see me struggle with saying disability because I look at it as more of a different way of having to do life rather than a disability. Um, but anyway, what's that saying about them? I mean, in the context of politics, in the context of this statement, their ability would be looked at as nothing, even though it's not. So does that mean that their need is increased because they can't can't help themselves or are they just overshadowed so it can have its perks and I'll agree communism while I do not support it there are some things of the crux of communism that sound good and that if done right could work but when you have a one-party system you get China China, 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 China. So, no, or Nazi Germany, which wasn't even communism, but same thing applies. The free of the market, the three of the people. Now, I will agree, but again, this is where I would lean more towards agree, but wouldn't completely agree. It's not completely true. China, I've been watching a lot of a couple of guys um, who have actually been living in China for one 10 years now, one 14 years now. And so they've been able to see it uh, grow and um, ungrow. Uh, and the, f the market there is relatively free from what they show and from what they say. And they even admit it, the market there is relatively free. In fact, I'll link their channel that they do together in the description as well. But the free of the people? Well, no. Those people aren't free. Um, those people are subject to whatever the Communist Party wants. Um, so, I, most places, yes, the free of the market, the free of the people. But not always. It's a sad reflection on our society that something as basic as drinking water is now bottled, branded, uh, for consumer product. I will disagree. Why is that sad? It helps a lot of people in a lot of different countries. In fact, if anything, it's a good thing. I won't strongly disagree because in a place like New Zealand, where we have a lot of fresh water and probably don't need it, it's probably not as needed. But then again, we're a tourist country, so tourists from places who predominantly drink bottled water, it's good for them. But anyway. Uh, land shouldn't be a commodity to be brought and sold. Well, no. 
because I don't want to buy a plot of land or to, let's say in this system, claim a plot of land, build my house there, but because I haven't bought it, it's not essentially mine, um, a random walks in and goes, oh, I claim this spot too, so now we're either living together or you can leave. That's ridiculous. So I strongly, this is my first strongly for the video, but I strongly disagree with land shouldn't be a commodity. It, it should be. Um, because we humans just can't do anything uh, around a system that isn't, you know, we're not smart enough in a sense to not fight over things like that. It is regrettable that many persons, personal fortunes are made by people who simply manipulate money and contribute nothing to their society. Again, need a middle one. I will disagree a little bit because in places like California, rich people have to pay an extremely high tax. Now, I agree that rich people should be taxed more than non-rich people. By how much? I don't think it should be California's rates, but at the same time, California can't even use those taxes effectively, so what do I know? Protectionism is sometimes necessary in trade. Definitely. I mean, Trump's made a political career out of protectionism. It's mostly always, I won't say strongly agree, but I definitely agree that you need protection. Otherwise, places like China, and I hate to keep bringing it up, but China will just steal your intellectual stuff, product, and then you'll be out of business because they'll make it faster, cheaper, and potentially, not always, but potentially better than you. The only social responsibility of a company should be to deliver a profit to its shareholders. Uh, no. I strongly disagree with that. Um, the rich are too highly taxed. Again, you need a middle. In some places, yeah. In other places, no. The question is, where do I lean on this? I mean, you have a massive problem in Africa with crime lords and corrupt politicians who are super rich, who don't pay barely any tax, um, if any. So, the rich are too highly taxed. I probably lean more towards disagree. Some places, yeah, they are though. Those with the ability to pay should have access to higher standards of medical care. I agree with this, yes, but at the same time, medical care should be a fundamental of every country and should be good for everybody. Like, really good. And if you can pay more, then it should be top tier. But medical care should be really good for everyone. Um, and when countries don't put an emphasis on it, on their health care, on their medical, on anything like that, you get our state of place today. Governments should penalise businesses that mislead the public. Yes, I agree. A genuine free market requires restrictions on the ability of predator multinationalism to create monopolies. The genuine free market requires restrictions. Uh, I'll say some. Because it does, it requires some. Abortions when the woman's life is not threatened should always be illegal. I strongly agree on that. This is that question and the whole discussion around abortion is always going to be tense and divisive. So I won't say much on it, but I do strongly agree. All authority should be questioned. Now, I lean more towards disagree because if you're going to question everything, then you hold up the process, you... I mean... If all authority should be questioned, that's essentially saying all authority should be questioned all the time, which is ridiculous. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. I lean more towards agree uh, and the fact that that is how trade is done. Uh, and sometimes in forceful situations, you need to do it. Not all the time, and I, it wouldn't be the go-to, but... I agree more with it than disagree. Again, you need that middle ground on this damn test. But anyway, taxpayers should not be expected to prop up any theatres or museums that cannot survive on 
a commercial basis. Yes, they shouldn't. Schools should not make classroom attendance compulsory. <laughs> See, I think for me this is the question I hate the most on this uh, test, after seeing it a few times. For the simple fact that I really disagree with the New Zealand schooling system. I really do. Um, and a lot of schooling systems around the world. Uh, I think that they only cater to a certain group of people and that others are just left. On the thing of should attendance be compulsory, yeah, it probably should, but the school system needs to change. I'll put it like that. All people have their rights but it is better for all of us that different sorts of people should keep to their own kind. I strongly disagree, and we're all humans, so get over it. Good parents sometimes have to spank their children. I disagree. It's natural for children to keep some secrets from their parents. And see, this is where the question, this quiz, the questions can sometimes be skewed, because they want you to be like, Children should keep things from their parents. Yes, yes, they should. Or parents should be overly controlling and know everything of their children. But the question's framed as, it's natural. Well, yeah. Agree. Yes, it's natural. Possessing, possessing marijuana for people, uh, for personal use, sorry, should not be a criminal offence. See, I'm still looking into this. I've had many discussions with many people in person and online and a couple of my friends have actually done some huge huge research on it New Zealand's actually got a this year at, in our election we're actually voting should it be uh, should marijuana be illegal for I think it's medicinal purposes um, I think marijuana has its benefits for per, uh, for medical use I think that for it to be as widely accepted as things like cigarettes is probably not as acceptable, uh, just because from all the research that I've seen, and I'll put it like that, that I've seen, because there is, I'm, as I said, I'm still looking into it, and I guarantee that I've missed something somewhere. If it's normally grown without any additives, without any selective growing and stuff like that, then it's probably more than most of the time it's not too bad because of the way the world went with it, because it was made illegal, because it's now sold on the black market by gangs and stuff. That's where you get your problems. Um, all the additives and stuff. So. Should it be a criminal f offence? I still think yes, um, and it just be there for medical purposes. I think that is the only way at this time and into the near future that it can still be safe. The prime function of schooling should be to equip the future generations to find jobs. I disagree with that. I think that jobs are vital, um, and I think that schooling, whether it's done right or wrong, is vital. It should be primarily just there to help people find jobs? No. Schooling should be there to equip people for their future. Yes, for the adult working world. But it shouldn't just be there to equip people to find jobs. Because if it's there just to find jobs, then they're not going to know how to pay tax. They're not going to know how to do this. They're not going to know, you know, raise a family. They're not going to know how to do anything else that they might want to do so more no than yes but I mean that should be one of its functions people with serious inheritable inherited disabilities should not be allowed to reproduce I strongly disagree with that the most important thing for children to learn is to accept discipline I disagree it's a good thing for them to learn is it the most important no there are no savage uh, yeah there are no savage and 
civilized people there are only different cultures again this is one where i'd be more in the middle because you have cultures that practice things like cannibalism those who are able to work and refuse the opportunity to, should not accept expect society's support i mean i agree with this but then you've got is it just refuse because they want to be lazy pricks then yeah uh if they refuse because of something like a disability then they should still be supported when you are troubled it is better not to think about it but to keep busy with more cheerful things i disagree on that for some people it can work for others it's just their worst nightmare i mean i tried that when i was going through depression and it got me deeper into depression so yeah first generation immigrants can never be fully integrated within their new country i disagree and it is a more lean towards disagree because some don't want to try most can though what's good for the most successful corporations is always ultimately good for all of us i strongly disagree with that that is stupidity 101 no broadcasting institution however independent their content should receive public funding see i lean towards agree that's the great thing about youtube or previous youtube before everybody decided that they had to crack down on everything um but that was the great thing about youtube and that you know opinions are out there thoughts are out there it gets conversations started more information can be put out there faster all good things if information is out there people can weed through it and find out what is the truth and what is false the more of that there is the easier it is the more decisions and the faster you can make them it's all good things so yes they probably should have a little bit if you get too much then they'll just be controlled by that government so <laughs> no thanks our civil liber oh, this page is about wider society so our civil liberties are being exceedingly curved oh sorry exceedingly and excessively curved in the name of counter-terrorism yes I agree. I mean, in New Zealand, we had one ter terrorist attack, um, which I don't agree with, but just like that, New Zealand goes from a country that has, you know, we can't, we don't even come close to the range of weapons that places like America can get, or even Australia, but, or Australia used to anyway, but, um, now we've cracked down and you can have barely anything. It's ridiculous. And we're a hunting society. A significant advantage of a one-party state is that it avoids all the arguments and delayed progress in a democratic political system. Again, another question that's like a significant advantage. Well, yeah, this is an advantage of a one-party system, but this is if you put agree to this, you're essentially saying that you want a one-party system. I don't want a one-party system. One-party systems are, they're just bad. An advantage of a one-party system is that it avoids all arguing because the top man or woman of that party makes the decisions. And if there is arguments within that party, it doesn't matter. They might argue for five, ten minutes, but as soon as the top guy's had enough, he'll go, bang, and this is what we're doing. I agree. It is an advantage. Should we have one-party systems? No. The electronic age makes official surveillance easier. Only wrongdoers need to be worried. I disagree with that. Be, going back to China and just on recent things, go check out that channel. Uh, not many of them are actually wrongdoers and yet their surveillance is high. And it's increasingly getting worse in the Western world as well. You look at Europe and Britain, holy cow. The death penalty should be an option for the most severe crimes. I'll put it this way. A mafia boss, if you put them in jail, they can still, depending on what jail, they can still pull the strings from the outside. They have ordered kills on hundreds, sometimes thousands of people. They're selling narcotics or whatever, or weapons or whatever, to people who will go and kill other people. Again, that's maybe where I would consider the death penalty. Maybe. I'm still going to put disagree with that because I'm more... It's like the final, final resort. You know what would be better than a uh, than the death penalty, even for what I just said? A prison in space. 
In a civilized society, one must always have people above air to be obeyed and people below to be commanded. I disagree. In criminal justice, punishment should be more important than rehabilitation. In criminal justice, punishment should be. But then you should try and rehabilitate. And because I spent so long on the other one, I will go agree and get off that topic quick. It is a waste of time to try and rehabilitate criminals. I strongly disagree. You can have major success with it. The business person and the manufacturer are more important than the writer and the artist. See, here's the thing. Sometimes they can be, sometimes they can't be. So while I will... Where do I lean more on this? I don't know. While I will more disagree, it's another one of those middle ones. Mothers may have careers, but their first duty to is to be a homemaker. Again, this is a middle one. If the mother has a career that is either better than the father's, or the father is willing to be a stay-at-home father, then, I mean, yeah, they still have a duty to together make a home, but depending on the situation of that family dynamic, if a mother's got a better job or they want to be the breadwinner over the male, then no, their first duty shouldn't be to be a homemaker. Um, this question is designed to be, are you a chauvinistic pig? Well, I do lean towards more agree because unfortunately, still in today's society, it's not impossible and it's more increasing, but it is harder. And I say harder uh, for women to get better pay, but some and quite a lot still actually can and do get better pay than males. Multinational corporations are unethically exploiting the planet's genetic resources for develop of developing countries. I agree. Making peace with the establishment is an important aspect of maturity. I disagree. I hate most establishment. Well, not hate. I disagree with most establishments. Uh, this one is uh, on religion. Astrology accurately explains many things. Oh my gosh. Strongly disagree. You cannot be moral without being religious. I disagree. You can be moral. I think that religion help or religion helps with that or whatever. Charity is better than social security as a means of helping people genuinely disadvantaged. Again, you need a middle one. I actually I more disagree with that one uh, because I think that social security is a more stable form of helping. Charities can be a lot better and often are a lot better in what they choose to do. So again, this question needs a middle one. Some people are naturally unlucky. What the heck does that have to do with religions? But uh, some people are naturally unlucky in a lot of things. I will agree with that. It is important that my child's school instills religious values. I'm going to agree with that. Now here's why. Let's take values out of there and change the question to it is more important that my child's school instills religious knowledge. Now what do I mean by religious knowledge? Schools should teach the difference between most mainstream uh, religions these days because it's becoming such a hot contested topic and I might even do a video directly on my thoughts and my opinions and where I stand and stuff like that on religion so I won't get too into it here but it is the last question children and schools and teenagers especially should be taught the difference between each religion um, at least the main ones like Christianity uh, Islam Hinduism Buddhism Let, let's take those four uh, oh, and um, crap. Judaism. I don't know why that was so hard. Um, th those five should probably be taught in taught well, and the difference between all of them, the good and the bad of both, or all five, and then, you know, and not told, oh yes, you should be more 
of a Muslim than a Christian, or you should be more Jewish than a Buddhist, or stuff like that. Um, but the last thing I'll say on this is that we do live in a society where it is been for so long but more increasingly you can say and do whatever you want to a person with any form of Christian belief but as soon as somebody whether they're Christian or not says Muslims or more specifically sorry Islam is bad boom they are crucified at the cross essentially and called Islamophobic well there are a lot of people at least I would say most people at least once in their life that are Christian phobic so anyway right let's see where I stand so this is just this is talking about it that's the economy the economic scale that's the social scale you've got the authoritarian right you've got the authoritarian left you've got the libertarian left you've got the libertarian right so this is where people and this is a little bit wrong huh that is very interesting left 75 percent and libertarian 2.36 percent oh i don't know about that peoples hmm that's interesting anyway I'll put my fathers up right now, um, side by side, and we can see the difference. I think we're actually very close. I would disagree with that. I actually think I think I'm a little bit more right authoritarian. I am cl very close to the actual center of that cross, or oh, kind of, but I actually think I am very, oh sorry, not cent not close to the center of the cross. I am very close to the the line of the right between the blue square and the purple square. I lean a little bit more into authoritarianism than liberalism, uh, but I am definitely actually more right than left. And here's the thing, I, I do have some leftist views, but I am definitely more right than left. So. I'll probably take another test, a uh, different test, to see where I stand and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've, uh, I hope I've given you some things to think about. And uh, yeah, definitely, if you want to see kind of where you stand, then take this test. It's okay. It's not great. It's okay. Um, it might get you thinking about things. Uh, these questions, the first time I saw them, and actually when Dad and I were going through them, he had to think about a few things. Um, so your view, it will probably broaden your views and get you thinking about some things. So uh, if you're coming up to an election like New Zealand and America are at the end of this year, or you just want to see where you fall um, and get yourself thinking about things for who you're going to support and stuff like that in the future. Take this test. Also, go check out uh, the channel in the description below. It's ADV China. It's the um, two of these fellas actually have their own separate channels, but do this channel together. It's very insightful. They have amazing content both, uh, and they often say, you know, they, they're not here to bag on China, but they're not here to say that China's the best place in the world. It is very, uh, it, it's very up and down depending on what they're talking about and what's going on. But they have both got a lot of experience with China, both living there for, you know, 10 and 14 years. So anyway, go check them out. But until the next one, bye guys!